Just how important is Phone Guy? Almost every FNAF fan knows Phone Guy. New or old, people know him because he's such an iconic FNAF character. He appears in three games and even appears in Ultimate Custom Night, which kind of makes it four. Five if you include Help Wanted. He even spoke about major parts of the FNAF lore that would later be included in upcoming FNAF games. In FNAF 1, he spoke about the Bite of 87, which was a very famous event that happened in FNAF 2. In FNAF 2, he spoke about Fredbear's family diner and in FNAF 3 he spoke about sister location which no one literally no one in the FNAF community knew what was coming but let's get started on how he really is important and remember to subscribe because I'm on the road to 1300 subs in FNAF 1 phone guy doesn't mention that many important things although he has some iconic voice lines he also mentions the bite of 87 which would be an upcoming event in FNAF 2. FNAF 1 isn't all that important, although the fact that he included a detail that would later be included in the second game is just pretty crazy if you think about it. Although not as crazy as FNAF 2 scripts, Phone Guy basically just gives away the theory that the toy animatronics are possessed by children. Instead, he tells us that the toy animatronics are programmed to detect a predator from a mile away, so if they see an adult, they act more aggressive than they do with the children. They don't act aggressive with the children, by the way, that's what I was trying to say. Phone Guy is one of the biggest spoilers for upcoming FNAF games. He also mentioned why Foxy hates flashlights, and even mentions Fredbear's Family Diner, which would later be included in FNAF 4's minigames. At least I think, I can't really remember, I think I need to go back and read Phone Guy's voice lines again. But let's move on to FNAF 3. In Night 1 and 2, we're greeted with a different type of Phone Guy. Instead, we're greeted with Phone Dude, who tells us how they found Spring trap, all the parts and equipment of the other animatronics, and even mentioning the safe room. But it's not as important as the prehistoric VHS tapes that they found. These VHS tapes were meant to be training tapes for new Freddy Fazbear employees, where Phone Guy literally just tells us everything about how to get in and out of an animatronic. He even mentions an incident at the sister location, which is a game that wasn't even thought of at all after everyone thought that FNAF was over after FNAF 4. He he even mentions how there were multiple spring locking incidents. He also mentions how multiple locations had safe rooms and all of them were boarded up. Just so you know, these tapes were made like about 30 years prior to FNAF 3. He even mentions how the spring locks work, how to get inside of a spring lock suit. I mean, this guy is one of the most important characters and some people don't even notice it. Since he knows everything about the spring locks, he might have been an employee since Fredbear's family diner, meaning that he probably knows everything until he sadly died in 1993. If he didn't die at night 4, we probably would have known a lot more stuff. And and this just also proves that he is such an important character. Although if you guys have watched the video to the end, then I really support it. And before this video ends, I just want to ask you guys one thing. What do you think about Phone Guy?